showcasing at this year's Mobile World Congress? So one of the exciting developments over the past year that we had with our FlexWave platform is that it really moved us from a distributed antenna system to a distributed access system to support future HetNet applications that are becoming more and more prevalent. What we have done in addition to the usage of DAS systems in venues to enable them to be used in central offices as part of the HetNet and to take advantage of some of the terrestrial infrastructure that exists in telecom networks today. And uh, one of the important steps to that was to take care of the fact that equipment can be put into central offices. Space is becoming more, more available with becoming uh, smaller and uh, as such operators can you use the space to use for wireless infrastructure. However, particularly in North America, Telcordia NEPS 3 compliance is one of the important factors that is necessary to have for equipment to be deployed in a central office. As such, we have adapted our host unit to be able to be NEPS 3 compliant. What that enabled, along with an all digital end-to-end -end architecture of the FlexWave system, is to really do an all digital connection all the way from the core network through the BBU to the host system all the way to the remote uh, which are in place of a multiple small cells that can operate over multiple bands. It's a very compact way to deliver small cell performance for one or multiple operators in multiple bands. And uh, municipalities that are concerned about visual appearance and the uh, increase in number of small cells have a solution that is really, really compliant with the needs of a telco infrastructure. Can you walk us through physically where the PRISM system connects into an Alcatel-Lucent uh, uh, network, for example? So, an Alcatel-Lucent infrastructure would take the backhaul, put it into BBUs, all digital, all generally optically fed. We can do an optical connection from one or multiple bands into our host units where multiple operators can be combined onto one digital platform that then can combine multiple operators and multiple bands and then again transport over a digital optical infrastructure all the way for, to the remote units that can be many kilometers away. The fiber plant, again, does not need to be specialized. It can take advantage of the existing fiber plant and skill set that is needed to maintain this fiber plant. What's the significance of this being able to transmit the 20 watts? The 20 watts, is a, it's, a, it's a nice number because uh, when you apply it to multiple operators, the composite 20 watts is divided by multiple operators and gets into the 5 watt range that is associated typically with an outdoor small cell. So multiplying the value of multiple small cells into a single remote unit, again, giving a very compact, cost efficient uh, way of distributing radio signals. And uh, increasingly we see that operators accept the value of shared infrastructure and uh, users benefit from it in the, obviously, total cost of ownership, but also in the visual appearance to being very confined in, uh, in form factor and as such providing less visual pollution on street poles or sides of buildings where we often see these units. What's the impact of optical on PIM interference? Well, the interesting thing is when we're talking digital and talking optical, we are really moving the concept of PIM to the very few and last points where we have RF. And uh, that in, in the end is really from the remote radio head to the antenna, minimizing the points to really two points of connection at the remote unit and then the antenna. So uh, being digitally fed all the way uh, removes that consideration.